The Gombe Chimpanzee War, 1974 to 1978. A war between two chimpanzee tribes, if you can believe it, that fundamentally changed the way that humans look at not just the society of chimpanzees, but also the origins of our own history. I want you to imagine chimps marching into battle against rival tribes. This is the reality of chimpanzee society. It is not that different than our own. So before I start this video, I just want to say that this is an analysis video of the war where we try to draw some conclusions, not just about chimpanzees, but also of humanity, maybe form some speculative opinions about chimpanzees and maybe try to extrapolate from their own society how our society formed. So if you're looking for a video purely on the history of the Gombe chimpanzee war, I highly recommend just giving it a quick YouTube search. So let's analyze the Gombe chimpanzee war. The conflict happened from 1974 to 1978 between two communities of chimpanzees in the Gombe Stream National Park in Tanzania. Now, before we go any further, we can extrapolate quite a bit from this very simple bit of information about chimpanzees. So think about the following. Another species is engaging in what humans would describe as war. Another species is capable of premeditated genocide. Another species has the mental capability to strategically plan the extermination of a rival tribe. And another species has what we would describe as tribes. I would say just about all of those points were things that had, for the longest time, been attributed to humans or hominids. But it turns out that our behavioral origins go a lot farther back than we originally thought. Our origins, our instincts, what makes us human, takes one step further back than we thought. It doesn't start with the line of hominids, it starts one step further back, as we can see with chimpanzees who are exhibiting these exact traits, albeit in a less advanced form. In other words, it's safe to say that whatever the missing link is, so to speak, for humans and hominids and apes, was engaging in very human-like behavior long before humans were ever a thing. But even long before hominids were even a thing. So there were two groups at the Gombe Stream National Park in Tanzania. They were once unified, actually, as the Kasakela community. Now Jane Goodall, which is going to be the person who really gave us all of the information as she was watching these tribes of chimpanzees in Tanzania, and observing them under the pretense that chimps were nicer than humans. Because chimps were previously thought to be less aggressive and that humans were actually the most aggressive of the primates. Turns out that's not really the case. So this is a short summary on how we found that out. So the Gombe Chimpanzee War again was between two groups, once unified as the Kasakela community. However, the group splintered, okay? This is something that Jane Goodall noticed. So two chimpanzee brothers are actually going to lead the splintering group that is going to start this entire war. Two brothers, Hugh and Charles, and they're gonna take their chimpanzee comrades, Godi, D, Goliath, and Sniff, alongside a few females, and they're young, and they're gonna move south, away from their old tribe. Now, it's important to keep in mind that the tribe that they leave, the Kasakela tribe, is far larger than the Splinter tribe, right? And they're gonna consist of the males Mike, Satan, Sherry, Everard, Rudolph, Homeo, Figgin, and Humphrey. Now, these names are very important because as I tell the story, I'll be referring to the chimps by their actual names. So after the group splintered, Jane Goodall realized that both of the groups were starting to become more and more independent. They relied on each other significantly less, they interacted with each other significantly less, and from, from our point of view, it looks as if both tribes became their own independent, separate communities. We now know, prior to the splintering, the chimpanzees in the area of Tanzania that we're talking about roamed across the hills of Tanzania in territorial communities, so already we know chimpanzees are territorial, just like humans are. And these communities tended to consist of up to 40 members. Very similar to primordial human tribes. Now the splinter group is going to be called the Kahama. Okay, and again, they were led by the brother duo of Hugh and Charlie, and they're going to move south. However, their new tribe is going to be short-lived, because first blood is going to be drawn by the Kasakela community, the original tribe, on January 7th, 1974. Now, it happened when a party of six adult Kasakela males, which consisted of Humphrey, Figgin, Homeo, Sherry, Everett, and Rudolph, they ambushed Godi while he was feeding on a tree. So Godi was a member of the splinter group, the Kahama tribe. Now, before I continue, I just want to say that there has been some criticism with anthropomorphizing the chimps. I would say that this is probably not very valid criticism, considering the fact that if we're going to anthropomorphize any animal, I think it's fair to be doing it to primates, considering how close they are to us, just in behavior, instincts. However, 
keep that in mind when you're listening to this story as a lot of the terms used are very clearly human terms. And until contexts such as this really only ever applied to human society. Now, up until this point, Nobody had ever seen chimps engage in any kind of premeditated conflict with each other. So this was going to be the first time that we watched a chimpanzee deliberately kill another male chimp. This is less weird than what comes after because it's not unheard of for animals to kill their own kind, especially male on male conflict. This happens for a variety of different reasons, but one of the most notable ones tends to be for getting a mate. However, the weird thing that Jane Goodall is going to observe when she sees Humphrey Figgin, Homeo, Sherry, Everett, and Rudolph ambush Goaty is that when Goaty was killed, the victorious chimps celebrate dragging branches, throwing branches, screaming with hoots and hollers and screeches. Now what seems to be, as you will see as we continue the story, the main differentiating factor between what seems to be chimpanzee warfare and what is human warfare is that as you parse through the way the chimpanzees seem to fight, you get a, ironically, a very guerrilla warfare type of feel from it. What they tend to do, it seems, is pick out single individual males and then gang up on them as a team. So we don't tend to see chimps occupying other chimps' territory the way that humans will occupy territory. They just get rid of the rival tribe entirely. Then the chimpanzees that grouped up on the single male will be minimizing their chances of getting hurt themselves so they don't engage in large-scale warfare where they're not really worried about bodies where it's not really a big deal if a lot of people on your side die as long as you kill more people on the other side in my opinion is incredibly similar to again primordial human tribal society in which we suspect that large-scale warfare most likely was not the way that it was today because they would be trying to make sure that they limited their own casualties as much as possible now the scary thing about this is the concept that chimpanzees are capable of premeditated murder keep in mind that when we're talking about premeditated we're talking about a group of chimpanzees sitting minding their own business with other chimpanzees and collectively coming with a decision or at least following another chimpanzees decision to systematically kill and commit genocide on a rival tribe but again the point is that it was premeditated that it was something they thought of it's something that they wanted to do it's something that they took joy in after it happened now another very interesting chimp in this story is the chimp called goliath who was an elderly chimp chimp, part of the Kahama tribe that splintered south. Now the reason this particular chimpanzee is special is because Goliath had been relatively friendly with the Kasakela neighbors whenever encounters occurred. Now he had never exhibited any kind of aggression and typically it seemed like he was well respected by the members of the Kasakela tribe and he was promptly killed just like all of the other males. Notice how only the male chimpanzees are the ones getting killed and I think this is incredibly important for understanding apes and hominids and why they act the way that they do on a very primordial and instinctual level. Now, after the death of Godi, D, Hugh, and Goliath, we only had three left. Charlie, Sniff, and one who I did not mention before, Willy Wally, who, believe it or not, was crippled from polio. Now, Charlie is going to be killed next. After his death, the polio-stricken chimpanzee, Willy, he's going to disappear and never be found again. Now, Sniff, Sniff was able to survive, actually, for over a year. Even though he was able to hold out for some time, young Sniff was also killed by the Kasakala tribe. Over the course of four years, every single male from the Kahama tribe was systematically murdered. It was premeditated, and they were well aware of what they were doing. Again, they're territorial, just like humans are. They had their land, a splinter group formed in the south. You could tell there's animosity there. There's a little bit of angst, right? They split from them, now they're separating the resources. They're making it harder to get what was probably much easier before. But they've also dramatically weakened the Kasakala tribe, which I'm sure was not taken lightly by the Kasakalas. And they acknowledge the land of other troops and tribes, and they back away if they can't win, if they're outnumbered, for example. In fact, this is exactly what's going to happen when the Kasakala defeat the Kahama, and they push further further into the Kahama territory. They're actually going to get pushed back by a rivaling chimpanzee tribe who was larger than they were. Now, unfortunately for the Kasakela, all of these neighboring tribes outnumbered them. And this was probably partly caused by the splinter group. So it makes sense why there would be animosity and angst between these two groups, considering the fact that by splintering, they've dramatically lowered the chance of survival of the original Kasakela tribe. It seems that chimpanzees have a whole array of different emotions and thoughts. They're capable of 
thinking about things like war. And what I think this does is it gives us a little bit of insight into exactly where hominids and human tendencies and instincts came from. Humans are renowned for war. We are renowned for being incredibly aggressive and destructive animals. For the longest time, we thought that this was unique to hominids, and it was most likely not something that was carried over that would have existed even far before hominids and apes. But this no longer should be the case, considering the fact that chimpanzees exhibit territorial warfare, as well as a complex society and complex forms of thought that we thought were very exclusive to just humans or at least hominids, meaning that war is older than human society itself. Now the concept that might immediately come to your mind when hearing this story and attempting to analyze it is the killer ape theory. Now, the killer ape theory is a very interesting theory because what it states is that war and interpersonal aggression became the driving force behind human evolution. The hypothesis originated by Raymond Dart in the 1950s, and according to the theory, the ancestors of humans were distinguished from other primate species just by their greater aggressiveness. Now again, I say Jane Goodall thought that chimpanzees were much more docile than humans and more peaceful until she actually watched them go on a hunting trip where they hunted monkeys in the surrounding area. Which they of course hunted in a fairly complex way, however this is less important considering the fact that a variety of different animals do hunt in a pack formation. In fact, what's more important to take away from this is that chimpanzees do in fact eat meat. When they found the monkey, they actually ripped it apart from the waist ripped its arms off, and just ate it alive. So this also shows us that primates and the ancestors of primates have most likely been eating meat since long before hominids ever picked it up. And it also goes back to the concept that perhaps fire itself and that ability to cook meat was probably the main driving force in human evolution. But it makes you wonder, right? If we were to go to these tribes of chimpanzees, now we know they're not capable of speech, of our kind of speech, however they are capable of interacting with each other and forming complex plans. So they must have either some kind of pseudo language or some ways of communicating with each other that are very, very advanced compared to most animals other than humans that allows them to come up with these complex plans, have these complex emotions, and, well, wage war with each other. Now, the killer ape theory was one that, honestly, most people seem to think was a bit of a joke until the Jane Goodall experience only 20 years later with the Gombe Chimpanzee War, but I think it's very important to keep in mind that what this event and this theory is doing is perhaps more important, less so because it's allowing us to know more about chimpanzees, but really what it does is it gives us a little bit of a closer look on our own evolution and our own origins. That the way evolution happened with humans and with hominids is that it started with some kind of primordial ape-like ancestor that probably did act very similar to chimpanzees. They probably formed tribal structures of some kind, they probably waged war on each other, they were probably incredibly territorial. And again, what this story really tells us is that war predates humankind. So what do you guys think about the Gombe War of 1974 to 1978? Pretty interesting event that happened, learning that chimpanzees not only engage in war, but are capable of very complex tribal systems that really put them far closer to home than perhaps we originally thought. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys have a good day.